and welcome to today's 30-day deep trends identification challenge. Now today's a bit of a troubleshooting video because from time to time things may come up. Uh, there might be a clash of values occasionally and this video is going to help you resolve that. For example, if I were DTIing with Steve Jobs, and I'm, I use Steve Jobs a lot uh, because I've had a lot of experience doing DTI work with him. When I first started, there was a significant clash in values. My model valued work and valued creativity. My model valued uh, the aesthetic. But he didn't value so much relationships. He didn't value um, others. And I do. So on one hand, I had my model. On the other hand, I had me. So we're going to do a form of a visual squash, a Vulcan mind melt, if you will, to resolve these values conflicts. And it's going to be very similar to the last video in which you did a visual squash between the model and your community. This time, it's going to be the values of the model, your values, and the reason, the value of the DTI. So if you were to think about the model and what's most important to them as you begin to chunk up, for example, with Steve Jobs, as I mentioned, it was there's a great deal of emphasis on aesthetic. For me, in the context of the DTI, the value had something to do with eventually finding freedom, well-being, and so on. So at first, these kind of don't match. Then I had to think, well, if I'm doing the DTI, what's most important to me about DTI with Steve Jobs? And it was to find within myself the same type of mentality that Steve Jobs had in the work environment, that stick to itness, that my map of the world is right and I'm going to make a dream into a reality. Well, that's kind of like a big idea in terms of words, but it doesn't really tell us a whole lot. So I had to think a little bit more. Well, when Steve Jobs is having his, aesthetic, his aesthetics and practicality, when he's creating something that is user-friendly for the population, something that for his time, until he created it, we didn't know we wanted it, like the iPhone or the iPod, what are all those things doing for him? Well, if I stepped into that, it was giving him freedom to express his creativity in a way that created supply and demand. So if I step into my own shoes and my purpose for the DTI, and I were to chunk up even higher on my values, what did that same freedom, that same self-expression of creativity? So now we no longer have a clash of values. It's we're on the same same wavelength. All the stuff that didn't feel like it quite matched in the past now does. So this process is very simple. You can associate into the model, get the get their values chain, the things that are most important to them. Step into yourself, be yourself, and all the things that are important to you about this process. What is the overarching value of the DTI process? And enjoy finding that congruence because that's what's going to allow you to sidestep any type of values conflict. Now, of course, if you've gone through this process step by step and have done things like the pendulum and ensuring that the unconscious mind is in alignment with the DTI before you do it, the odds of finding a values conflict or a popping up have diminished. But from time to time, it does. And when it does, you can do this process to find the common shared value between you as the DTIer and the model within the context. Now, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you soon.